Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is Sunday. Shay has just gone down for his lunchtime nap, which means I've got around an hour and a half, two hours. And this is my time to do my self-care practice. And I think self-care has been talked about a lot all the time. And it's normally linked to like having a bubble bath or having a massage. And as amazing as those things are, they don't do it for me in the way that I really need. They don't have that kind of soul connection. I think I've had to reframe what self-care means to me and taking time for me really means. So I've kind of come up with a little bit of a routine that I'm starting now in 2020 and beyond um, of these little rituals that I do. And they might seem quite simple, but they're so effective effective for looking after my mental well-being, for making my week ahead a little bit easier. And I think that's kind of what the focus of self-care is. It's looking after yourself. And we're all so individual. Um, and these are things that really work for me. So hopefully they inspire you to start figuring out if some of these connect with you, or at least you start really thinking what works for you because i think that's the most important we're all so individual what might work for me may not work for you but you might be inspired by some of the things that i do and then you might start doing them and you're like these are wicked and i feel so much happier um <laughs> that's the aim so the first thing that i always do is get productive for the week ahead now i'm a massive planner I think that's the only way I can get everything done. So I will work out my calendar and I use Google Cal um, and I'll plan out my week ahead. This really relieves Sunday anxiety for the work week ahead because I can really have a look across the week. And I'll plop in little nuggets of self-care, little nuggets of um, exercise of catching up with friends with whatever i need so i find sunday a really amazing time to go okay what's happening this week you know where do i need to rest a little bit more where do i need to where can i put in that exercise class i really want to go to um so i find that really having that clear head of like the week ahead is a fantastic thing to do it really makes me feel less anxious on a sunday for work the week ahead i feel like almost foreseen it and um you know really thought oh god you know say for example on a thursday it's really busy gone you know what, i'm gonna really need an early night that night so i'm not gonna put anything on in the evenings i'm gonna get home i'm gonna you know grab some soup and then i'm just gonna have a really really lovely early night so i think it's good to foresee you know what potentially might happen in that week the second thing that I do, and it also goes in my diary, but it's become such a ritual for me that my body naturally wakes up, is that I wake up early and meditate. And I'll talk a little bit more about sleep and waking up early later on because I'm so passionate about it. But for me, meditation has been the biggest act of self-care I could ever give myself. And I think we often struggle with meditation so much because we think it's about not thinking anything and not having thoughts and so many people give up on meditation i'm just gonna lie back i'm getting quite relaxed uh, people give up on meditation because they think that they're not, they're not good at it now look meditation is not necessarily being good at it and sometimes through meditation i'm like having a daydream for like five ten minutes during it it's fantastic <laughs> you know naturally thoughts come into our mind and yes it is about you know, stilling our mind and coming back to our breath, but it's not about beating ourselves up if we do think. So every morning my alarm goes off at six o'clock and I meditate for 20 minutes. Normally between kind of five past six to 25 minutes past six. And waking up before my son gets up really makes a difference for my day because I feel like I've done something for me. I'm not on the back foot where he's awake before and I'm kind of stumbling around um, six o'clock I've trained my body clock to wake up to it naturally sit there and I know that it's 20 minutes because of my watch so I use my Olivia Burton um, rose quartz watch which is 
probably the most beautiful thing that I own and I love and you know I love Olivia Burton so much um, and I'm so so happy to be their ambassador um, it makes me very very happy to be working with them and I've been using them for like how many years five six seven years I don't know forever. This watch is really special to me because rose quartz is known as the heartstone. It has really peaceful energy so I know when I'm wearing it that I have this wonderful like nurturing peaceful loving energy with me at all times and I think we have a really odd relationship with time where especially with something like meditation we're like I don't have time to meditate, I don't have time to exercise, I don't have time for self-care and I think we all do and I know I'm in a privileged position um, in so many different ways and I'm, I'm not gonna say that you know I don't recognize that and I'm so appreciative of it however I believe that we've all got two minutes a day to like sit and breathe and be quiet and still I think little pockets and little bits of moment and time of meditation breathing you know relaxation are so important because then we can be more efficient at work, we can be a better parent, we can be a better friend um, because we've revived ourselves um, and I think feeding our soul in these things is so important. So when you don't quite know what you need, because it's not always easy to know like what you need in terms of self-care, you know, I've been saying to you I, I love meditation and, and walking in nature for me is amazing but a really good thing to do on a daily basis is to check in with yourself close our eyes take a big breath in big breath out right and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna body scan all the way from the top of our head relaxing our forehead eyes cheeks nose relaxing our chest, our tummy, relaxing our legs, our ankles. And as you really connect with your body, I want you to just ask yourself this very simple question, what do I need right now? What do I need right now? And you might get a really strong answer. You might not hear anything, but you might feel your tummy rumbling or your head hurting or your back sore, whatever you feel, or whatever thoughts or feelings bubble up, just let them come up and then open your eyes. Now this is a really nice check-in to do all the time just to connect with yourself. We're so disconnected from our bodies, um, we're always in our heads thinking we must do this, we must achieve that, we must you know, tick this off the to-do list but actually asking your body what do you need is it rest is it actually you're feeling a bit lonely and you need to connect with a friend you know i think that loneliness is such a big problem they've linked that being feeling lonely is just as bad for your health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day what they're up to so i feel like we need to connect more even if it's just walking down the street having a conversation with you know the person that you buy your coffee from. You know, those little interactions, smiles from a strangers, conversations with strangers, conversations with your best friends, conversations with your partners, they help you feel connected and less lonely. So do try this 45 second thing, connect more with yourself, really figure out what you need. And this will change all the time through different stages of life, different seasons, we need different things, but if we can figure out what those things are, how fantastic and how much better will our life be. My other act of self-care is thinking about what makes me happy, like what really lights me up, what feeds my soul, and then putting that in the week ahead. So again, my Sunday self-care is almost really about scheduling. There's a little bit of meditation, there's a little bit of taking time for myself, of rest and relaxation, but actually a lot of it is scheduling in these moments of happiness so my kind of toolkit for happiness one of them is walks in nature um, so I always try and schedule that in and I purposely walk through the park um, taking my son to nursery because I get that interaction with nature it really feeds my soul and then on the weekends I'm always in the park 
you know, going to different farms, you know, really accessing nature in a beautiful way. Um, the other things that make me happy are going out for brunch with friends. Sounds quite standard, probably a lot of people make them happy, but like I always really like to schedule that in, try new restaurants, try new places. Um, so I'll always try and put a diary date in, even if it's not every week, because it's not always possible, but um, really trying to get that in there. And other things that make me really happy are having early nights and really prioritizing my sleep. I know my mental health is just so much better when I sleep well. I think sometimes we don't take sleep seriously. We continue to kind of binge watch TV into the night or work till really, really late and then feel exhausted and we're down, we're grumpy with our friends and partners, you know, and the cycle just goes on and on. Um, so go to bed an hour earlier than you already are, wake up an hour earlier and have that hour of power in the morning. The morning is such an amazing time. And I even quite like it when it's dark outside and wintry because you feel like you're the only person in the world awake and you're completely on your own time. And especially as a mum with a little child, you know, you often don't get very much quiet time or time alone. So waking up before my son wakes up has revolutioned my life. And this is my time to exercise, this is my time to meditate, this is my time to shower. <laughs> this is my time to, you know, really connect with myself and, and nurture myself with these things that make me happy. Another act of self-care that I love is journaling. And journaling is something that's just really good to just brain dump. If you're really stressed, worried, anxious about anything, Getting it down on paper is a fantastic way of communicating. Of course, speaking to friends and family and loved ones um, is also good, but sometimes when you're not quite sure how you feel, you're not sure how you communicate it, or it might be tricky to speak to that certain person because they're involved, um, I think journaling about things is really, really good. It's very reflective. You learn a lot about yourself as well, and I think that is a big purpose of life, is just figuring out who we are. Um, and I think that it's just a really fantastic way to acknowledge your feelings, feel heard, but reflect on them, see what patterns you've potentially got into. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love journaling. I think it's such a fantastic thing to do. Really easy, just pen and paper. That's all you need. That is my Sunday self-care. I'm going to go put it into action, start planning my diary, start planning those pockets of happiness and also have just a little bit of rest i think we're sort of obsessed with being busy and it's almost like the default thing that we say to each other how are you busy busy yes busy and not that there's anything wrong with that but when you say you're busy you feel like you sort of shut off time for other things and i think it's okay to relax and lie down you know, daydream, be bored, not have to kind of pick up your phone and scroll through Instagram or internet shop or do things. And this is a big learning thing for me because I am also, like most people, addicted to being busy. But actually when I just have a moment, 10, 15 minutes of lying down, relaxing, you know, daydreaming, just really embracing doing nothing and, and just, embracing relaxation i feel so revived and how nice to just switch off for a little bit you know leave that aside connect with yourself because the more we understand about ourselves the happier we are because we understand our purpose we understand our needs and you know then we could make sure we're looking after ourselves and and that for me is self-care so I'm off to do it. Um, I will see you in another of my videos and I hope that this video resonated with you. Do give me a comment down below, a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.